Here we go. I my signal. Unleash hell. God bless the geek. Rules. We don't think so. Welcome to the Geek Speak Show. Please make a note of it. This is the show where you hear everything geek culture. Bob, you noticed we've been sharing our culture with you all morning. Talking movies, comics, video games, TV shows, all from a geek point of view. People who get it, get it. If it's geek, we'll speak about it here on the Geek Speak Show. Here are your hosts, Henry and Romo. Well, here I am at least. Hi, how are you doing? It's Henry. Welcome to the Geek Speak Show. Yes, a little bit early because this is the week for love. Geek love, but still the week for love. Now, if you're a geek, and when you hear this song playing behind me, if that's what makes you think of love, if you think that the love between Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala was real love... Then we really got to help you out. And we'll do just that. We're going to do a couple of things. A couple of really special guests today just for Valentine's Day. First, those of you who have always wondered, how do I find my soulmate? And you're a geek. Got the answer for you in just a second. And you, quote unquote, regular girls who have always wanted to understand us or want to date one of us geeks. There's actually a handbook out there, believe it or not. There's a handbook out there that shows you how to understand us and how to date a geek, a real one. And we'll talk to the author of that handbook in just a few minutes. We'll also do TV talk. Walking Dead is back. Huge in the ratings, like always. Phenomenal. Talked about The River last week with producer Damien. It's on tonight as you're listening to this. If you're listening on uh, Tuesday, Valentine's Day, it's on tonight. Perfect date. Not movie, but uh, perfect date TV show if you want to stay home and do that. Uh, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk to David Lee. We'll, we'll hear him do his comics commentary. And I also found a way to bring Romo here without him actually physically being here. Stay tuned for all of that. But like I said, this is the week for love, for geek love. So let me show you guys how to find your soulmate, your soul geek. A play on soulmate there. We'll show you how to find your soul geek in just a few minutes. The Geek Speak Show will be right back. Tell the world about that great book you just finished reading or read when you were younger. Send an email to books at thegeekspeakshow.com and your book will be featured on the weekly book club segment. Just a few rules. One, the book must be in the sci-fi, horror, or fantasy genre. Or a mashup of those. Two, biographies are okay as long as it's relevant to geek culture. You know, George Lucas, Stan Lee, Steve Jobs, etc., etc. Three, no comic books, but graphic novels are okay. Four, you must have read the book and loved it. Don't suggest the book just because my friend's cousin, sister's boyfriend's dad said it was good. And that's it. Send your suggestions to books at thegeekspeakshow.com and you might hear your book mentioned on next week's show. If possible, we might even have the writer on to talk about the book. Books at thegeekspeakshow.com to have your book featured on the Geek Speak Show Book Club. Get ready to speak geek on the Geek Speak Show. And we are back on the Geek Speak show. I'm Henry. So, so it is the week for love, Valentine's Day. We did the show early just because of that, because of Valentine's Day for you guys. Like I was, like I was saying right before we took the break. Have, how many of you have been wondering how do I find my soulmate, my my soul geek to play on a soulmate? There, well, I have the perfect person to talk to you about that on the phone with us is Dino Andrade. He is the founder of SoulGeek.com. Dino, welcome to the Geek Speak show. Hello there, and thanks for having me on the show. Uh, hey, and if I sound a little gravelly, uh, I'm just getting over a cold right now, but uh, you know, just think of it as my sexy voice. Yeah, his, uh, his Barry White <laughs> impersonation. <laughs> there you, you put go. Put it that way. And so, I'm all about the love today. Yeah, so, so I was, we, all of us, we, we see the commercials all the time, you know, like eHarmony and Match.com uh-huh, and all of right. those. This right, right, one, right. SoulGeek.com, is for us, for the geeks. So just tell it everybody is. about SoulGeek and the story of SoulGeek. 
The story of Soul Geek, well, it, it is a different story, uh, but I can tell you um, straight up that Soul Geek is basically, for all intents and purposes, it, it's Match.com for us. Um, it, it, but unlike most dating sites, it's not about all of the uh, the shallow stuff like, you know, how much do you make and what kind of car do you drive and how much do you make, etc. Yeah, we want to know, are you into sci-fi, horror, fantasy, animation, anime, comic books, manga, cosplay, convention? collectibles, film scores, all of that stuff that we as geeks are into. Uh, and I am, I am a lifelong geek. I, I've been obsessed with uh, great works of ima- imagination for as long as uh, I can remember. In fact, it's, it's why I do what I do for a living. My, uh, my day job is I am a voice actor working primarily in, in animation, video games, etc. because I, I wanted to make my living in fantasy entertainment. So this is, this is something that is near and dear to my heart, all just, just through and through. Um, the creation of the site... Uh, well, it's it's a it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, it's very much a work of heart, which I know that's that's probably going to sound like a cliche, but it, it's actually true. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, I am the uh, widower of voice actress Mary Kay Bergman, whom we lost in November of 1999. Uh, and after I had lost her, I was just a lost human being for about five years. And and Mary Kay was not just. Um, my wife, she was my best friend. And one of the things that we reveled in, again, was fantasy entertainment. We collected comic books, animation cells. We had Starfleet uniforms. You know, we would go to conventions. We were, uh, geekdom was a major, major thing. So indeed, it was my best friend that I lost. Um, so after about five years of misery, I decided to start reconnecting with the world, and that's when I started getting into dating sites, and I joined pretty much every major site out there, and it was a wasteland. I mean, if you are, at the time, in your 30s and say, uh, I, I like Star Trek and read comic books, you're oftentimes saying, hello, hello. You know, it's like, forget it. Doors are Is this thing on? Things. Hello. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, you know, a sore nose from the door being slammed into it so many times. I mean, I would literally create dual profiles, my geek profile and my non-geek profile. So I literally had to lie about what it was that, you know, made my blood run, my passion, just to try and find someone. And that sucked. That's not how this thing should work. So years later, I ran into, of all people... Strangely enough, the way life works, my old high school sweetheart who came back into my life, uh, she helped mend a wounded heart. Uh, We fell in love with each other all over again. And uh, for a Father's Day present, she took me to a Battlestar Galactica event here in Los Angeles where the the band led by Bear McCreary that did the score for Galactica, I'm a huge film score nut, uh, were going to play the second season soundtrack live. And we we went and there was a gal in line ahead of us with a bunch of guys and she saw us hand in hand and I said, I hope we don't, you know, we're not making you sick. And she said, well, you know, I hope I could find a geek of my own here. And this just, this just brought back all the memories. I mean, it turned out those guys she was with was her cousin and she had driven in from San Diego. And I, I thought, you know, eh, this young gorgeous little gal drove in from San Diego to Los Angeles for a Battlestar Galactica event and she's alone. How does that work? You know, I'm yeah. thinking, be still my heart. If I was, you know, 10 years younger, I'd be all over and single. I'd have been all over that. But, you know, and, and this, this brought back all the memories. It brought back all the anguish. It, it, it reminded me of all that that I, I had lost. And I talked to my gal. I said, look, maybe, you know, somebody ought to do something about that. There ought to be, a, you know, a, a site that's on the scale of a, of a match.com that is specifically, you know, for the, the dating geek. And she looked me right in the eye and said, well, why don't you build it? And so that's what I did. I took funds that had been left to me by my wife and created the site. Uh, if you go to the homepage of soulgeek.com, you go to the lower right and click Story of Soul Geek, you'll see it all there. You'll see that the site is actually dedicated to my late wife. And uh, in many ways, the site is about making something 
wonderful come out of tragedy uh, because every wedding that we have had, and we've had 13 so far, I consider it a testament to my wife's memory. I really do. And so actually Valentine's is pretty special to me now. I mean, it used to be way back when, when you'd hear Valentine's Day, it was like, woohoo, six more weeks to opening day. You know? <laughs> uh, but now... Uh, it has its own very special and very precious uh, meaning, um, and, and life has just you know, just continued to change because I I feel like a very very lucky guy myself. That I mean, which is a weird thing to say when you're widowed in your 30s, but but I had a wonderful geek in my life, and now I have another one again because because my gal Casey's a huge geek. She like me is a big Star Trek fan and. And I, I, it's like, wow, I've had the love of two marvelous geeks in my life, and there are people out there who haven't had one. And so this was, this was what was behind the creation of the site. So I, I'm not a computer wizard. I, I don't know bupkis about that. I've had to hire people to, to come in and build everything. And in fact, the site now is in its you know, final months uh, before uh, a state-of-the-art Soul Geek 2.0 is about to take over. Um, you know, this was not done out of some kind of... Of, you know, business decision of hey, geeks have money. Have you seen how much they spend at Comic Con? You know, let's. You know, there there were no focus groups involved. It was just something that I felt I needed to do. Uh, and and I again, I'm thrilled by all the couples that we've brought together. Uh, in fact. Well, we, I just received an email from a couple that I have to write back and find out exactly who they are uh, who wanted to know if we were going to have a booth at Megacon in Orlando, which we're not, unfortunately. And I wrote them back and asked them, well, why are you members of press? They said, no, we're a couple who met on your site and got married. We wanted to meet you. Hmm. So I need to write them back and find out who they are. Yeah. So uh, this this just happened this past weekend uh, that I got this this email. So um, it, I, I I can't stress it enough. It is a work of heart. Uh, we're very proud of it. And uh, hey, if you are into any of those things, this is the site for you. Yeah, he's Dino Andrade, the founder of SoulGeek.com. And if you're thinking, hey, I need to go there, go to our link section. It's on there, SoulGeek.com directly if you just want to go there. But our link section, it's all easy for you to find on there. Get a membership and all of that. And Dina, from your experiences with the the other you know the other dating sites that you went on, uh-huh. wh- what did you bring to Soul Geek that was lacking, or you you thought it was hey you know I got to bring this because it was missing on the on the regular sites. Well, the main thing was to understand that we as geeks are very very passionate people. Um, you know, to 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 go back to other philosophies about, say, being an artist. You know, they say that uh, the difference between an artist and a non-artist is that uh, a non-artist uh, works to live, whereas an artist uh, lives to work. You know, it is your passion. Geekdom is the same thing. Um, it's what we are passionate about. It is what makes our blood go. It's we are thrilled by great works of imagination. We are imaginative, passionate people, and so I wanted the site to be focused on that about about the mind, uh, about the the intellect, about those things that make us appreciate that which is out of the ordinary. So there's nothing on the site that asks you. Um, again, how much money do you make? What kind of car do you own? What's your yearly salary? Uh, you know, this is this is not a site where you're going to see one profile after another that says I like long walks on the beach. I mean, we want to know: Are you into Doctor Who? Do you know the difference between a lightsaber and a phaser? Uh, um, do you know? Do, it, it's it, it's it really is about all of that stuff that makes us uh, just just go ooh every day. And, and and makes us want to uh, to turn on that TV and throw in that DVD and and, and or create our own works. So a lot of us get out there and get into you know fan fiction, fan films, or original work because we're so turned on to it. You know, like myself, I I'm so turned on by it. I wanted to make my living in it, and so I trained as an actor, and this is now what I do. Um, this is passion. And that's what I wanted to bring to the site was 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 a love of that, not all of that shallow stuff. I mean, we actually had one um, 
how do I say this nicely, troglodyte who <laughs> wrote to me when the site first launched who said, your site will fail, and the reason is because you don't you don't actually go through and make sure that uh, that you keep you know like 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 you know unattractive people off the site you know all of this kind of really shallow baloney which again well who are you to decide who who decides what is attractive and what's not you know and it's like and and I just I had to write the guy back and say you're absolutely right we're not shallow pinheads. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, and and you know, there is somebody for everybody on our site. That's what it's about. That's what makes our site different. Now, where we are alike, I would like to say, is that like a site like Match. dot com, it is entirely security based. It's not automated. There, uh, we have a twenty four seven staff who uh, monitors. Uh, the creation of every profile so there's no spammers, no scammers. We kick them off when they try to get on. Uh, you won't go to a profile that's actually some clown trying to sell you some crap you don't want. You know, It's not like, hey, check out our band or independent movie. I mean, uh, it, they're all real profiles of real dating geeks. That's all that is allowed on the site, period. Yeah, and we've had this conversation on the air many times before. Geeks, that is what being a geek is all about. Not just liking Star Trek, Star Wars, comics, whatever, but actually having a passion about it. And if you can find somebody who has the same kind of passion that you do, hey, perfect match. Absolutely, because you know there's two things that make a relationship work forever, and that is uh, shared values and shared interests. If you can combine those two things, you will create a best friend for life. And believe me, I am one who knows of which I speak. Uh, you know, and this is a place where you can find those things out. You can find those shared interests. And then if it turns out you've got the shared values, you're home free. Right. And the other thing I was just thinking of right now is you mentioned that yeah, you know, you don't, you're not shallow on here. You're, you're actually, you're not because I've, I've been on it. Not because I'm looking for a soul geek of my own. I actually been lucky enough to have. I found my soul geek 12 years ago. Congratulations! Just, yeah, thank you. I was on there just to take a look around and, and do some research. And not everyone has a picture, you know. Let's be honest. Most of the other the regular sites, you go on there and you you always gravitate to the hottest looking picture on there. That's not what right. this is about. What soul geek is about, right? Yeah, no, there's no there's no picture rating system or, or, or anything like that. Um, you know, in fact, we is Soul Geek 2.0. We're actually toying with an idea of uh, because people like surveys of doing a, a, a profile rating thing, but it will not be based on how hot you think this person is. Uh, it'll be on like you know the cleverness of the writing of the profile or or you know the you know the intellect behind it, the creativity behind it. Uh, we may go and add that as just a little little fun thing to give you something to do while you're running through the profiles. But none of it will be based on, hey, is this chick a 10? You know, <laughs> any of that stuff. It's it, it, Again, it's that's not what we were about. That's not why we did this. Yeah, he's Dino Andrade, founder of SoulGeek.com. Again, you can go to our link section. It's all on there for you. So let's get down to the basics, and that is what are the membership levels uh, at, at SoulGeek.com? Well, currently, and I say currently because that is going to change when Soul Geek 2.0 launches. Uh, we have, um, again, like all the other security-based sites, whether it's Match, eHarmony, you know, what, a- any of those, uh, there is a premium level and there is a free level. Uh, the premium level gives you all of the bells and whistles. The difference is our the cost for our premium level is just a fraction of what all of the other sites uh, charge. Soul Geek 2.0 will have a bunch of new levels added. Added in, uh, you know, day memberships, uh, uh, long-term passes. Uh, there will always be a, a free level in there, uh, and. Uh, what we are not going to do is, even though we're adding all of this new technology, we're not going to, you know, raise the rates to pay for it. We're still going to keep everything as affordable as possible. I mean, literally, we make enough to take care of that staff that watches the site to keep it safe. That's all we're interested in doing. Okay, and we and we don't want to tell people what to put on their profiles, but as no, a, as a geek, <laughs> what kind of advice would you give for geeks searching for their soul geek? My advice is to talk about the stuff that you're into 
uh, as opposed to putting out a bunch of unrealistic expectations. In other words, don't put into your profile, I am specifically looking for a five foot four blonde you know, who, you know, will wear high heels on every other Friday. I mean, you'd be amazed how many people will write stuff like that and then write me an angry email that I've been on your site for three months and haven't gotten a single response to my profile. That's well, of course why. not, because that's why, you know. <laughs> Um, and and there are people who do that who are, who are like, well, if you don't have if you don't have this, if you don't have that, and you don't have this, well, then don't even bother writing me. And it's like, I'm sorry, pal, you are going to get no response out of that. But if you're honest about, hey, this is the stuff that I'm into. I'm looking for somebody to share in this and share in that. Um, you will find someone. I mean, that's just how it works. Is the profiles that 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 fail are 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 the ones that are like that, or the ones that try to act like they're they're too hip for school? You know, I just want to sex you up. You know, it's like, <laughs> mm, yeah, cricket, cricket, cricket. You're not going to get anywhere. Um, you know, so so just just be true and honest about the stuff that you're into, because again, the foundation of all great relationships. I mean. All great relationships, shared interests and shared values, things you can do together and respect for one another comes out of the shared values. So, you know, you start start on the shared uh, uh start on the shared interest that's that's the first thing get out there I, you know I love this stuff I'm into this I'm into that um you know do that you know don't just sit there and put a list of here is exactly what i must have and if i don't have that you're wasting my time uh you you're, you're just an empty profile yeah so in, in plain english that we understand let your geek flag fly exactly i couldn't have said it better so, and speaking of when you let your geek flag fly what is dino andrade what do you geek out about what do I geek out about? I geek out about a number of things. Uh, I am particularly passionate about film scores. I love film scores. When I was a kid, uh, a next door neighbor gave me uh, the soundtrack, uh, Lex, Les Baxter's score, which is amazing, to uh, Master of the World. Was that, that the old film, um, the American International Pictures film starring uh, Vincent Price and Charles Bronson? And I fell in love with that score. And I, I was born in uh, September of 63, uh, Mexican Independence Day, funny enough. Uh, um, and which also happened to be here. Here you go. Here's here's something for that date. The very day the original Outer Limits premiered. This was two weeks before the original Doctor Who premiered, and uh, around the time that Gene Roddenberry had started production on the original pilot, The Cage, for Star Trek. There you go. So this is in my blood going way back when. But anyhow, this meant that I was in junior high, high school when Star Wars hit, and all those amazing Wagnerian scores of John Williams, and the scores of Jerry Goldsmith, and, and those just became Came, uh, you know, the soundtrack to my life, and and I and all of the new masters that are coming out of the world of video games, like Michael Giacchino. I love his work. Uh, you know, a lot of these folks. I am. I I have an iPod that is just. just to the brim with film scores, going from Franz Voxman's score to Bride of Frankenstein, up to uh, Giacchino's score to the new Star Trek, and everything in between. That's I, I love geeking out over film music. What do you think of Michael's new score for Star Trek? I liked it personally. I really liked it a lot. I I like that it had uh, a very strong melody to it. Um, I like uh, I, I like that it had uh, it, it kind of went back to the the Wagnerian style of having motifs for individual characters. You could tell by listening to the score when Nero was on, when Kirk was doing something. Uh, you know, I love that. It, it reminded me a lot of uh, John Williams' score to Jaws, where you could tell each motif. That was Hooper's theme. That was Quint's theme. That was you know. I I really really liked it a lot. I found it, it powerful. The, the the track "Enterprising Young Man" uh, the, that that has the death of Kirk's father in it. It's 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 a brilliant piece of music. I I really really liked it a lot. But he's done some amazing scores, and many of his best scores are, are coming out of animation. I mean, his score to Up, his score to. Um, uh, the Incredibles, the score to Ratatouille. These are amazing scores this man is writing. 
Yeah. I love his work. Yeah, I, I refer to him on the air as, as uh, you know, Stephen and George Lucas, they had John Williams, J.J. Abrams has Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's three generations. You have your your early generation, your your Franz Voxmans, your your Max Steiners, Ernst Korngold, all those guys who came out of the European classical um, thousand piece orchestra mindset. And then the second generation were all the guys who came out of jazz in the fifties: Goldsmith, Bernard Herrmann, uh, John Williams. You know, all of these dudes. The new generation are all coming out of video games. Uh, you know, John Ottman, and uh, you know, just on and on. On and on, uh, and so it's 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 just you know where they're getting their training from is informing you know where they go next, and and I love seeing the transition of it. I I, I have it on all the time. Um, in fact, one of the one of the wonderful stories uh, about how my life has gone, you know, despite the tragedies in it, is uh, my gal and I just had a son. He's he's about to turn two years old, uh, and he hears my scores pretty much twenty four seven. Uh, so uh so yeah this is this is really something that i'm passionate about yeah and it's uh throw in there howard shore and han zimmer oh. can't wait to hear his uh, score for the dark Knight rises uh-huh oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely i i really really enjoyed the uh the score to dark Knight and howard shore well you know i had to have the extended scores to lord of the rings those giant box <laughs> sets for for those and and have it their own playlist uh all by their lonesome i i howard shore scores to to the lord of the rings films and his score to king kong are just just favorites of mine yeah so he's dino andrade as you can tell he's one of us he's the real thing he doesn't just play <laughs> one on the radio so go to soulgeek.com to find your soul geek a little play on uh, soulmates there but like you can hear if you guys are passionate about star trek star wars comics music scores like like uh, like dino is Whatever it is, you can find it on soulgeek.com. You can find them on our link section on uh, geekspeakradioshow.com. It's all on there, all in one place, easy for you to find. Gino, thanks a lot for coming. Um, hey, and my pleasure. Are you going to be at Comic-Con this year? I will. I will. We we have a uh, a booth at Comic Con. I think it's booth fifty six nineteen. I think it is. It's it's against the back wall every year. Against the back wall at the end of aisle two thousand. I'm usually there with a bunch of my fellow voice actors uh, signing uh, uh, autographs. Uh, I'll have a bunch of my stuff from Batman Arkham Asylum. I'm the voice of the Scarecrow in Arkham Asylum. For folks who don't know, yeah, a little um, game that you may have heard about. Little game you may have heard of. I'm also a number of bosses in World of Warcraft, and we always have a lot of fun people at my booth every year. Uh, so we're we're, we're pr- fairly easy to find. Yeah, and WonderCon actually used, is used to be here in San Francisco. This year is going right. to be in Anaheim. You plan on it, being there? I will. I will be there. I have a uh, a celebrity table at uh, at Anaheim. So instead of the full Soul Geek booth, it will be just me. Uh, but yes, indeed, I will be. Uh, I will be at uh, WonderCon. Okay, we'll be covering that. So we'll go out there and say hi. Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Dino Andrade, founder of SoulGeek.com, SoulGeek.com, or on our link section, it's all on there for you. Find. Your soul geek, your soul made. So, Dino, again, thanks a lot. You're welcome back anytime on the Geek Speak Show. Hey, glad to be here. And yeah, absolutely. Have me back anytime. Okay, we'll talk to you later. You got it. Bye bye. The Geek Speak Show will be right back. Now you have another way to promote your geek product besides conventions. The Geek Speak Show. The Geek Speak Show has a loyal following that is just waiting for a new app for their smartphone, the most awesomest t-shirt to show off their geek pride, or insert your product here. Advertise on the show or on the Geek Speak website or on both. And you're guaranteed to reach the same audience you'd reach at your favorite con. Interested? Send an email to ads at thegeekspeakshow.com for more information and ad rates. Movie and TV studios, comic book artists and publishers and actors know to come on The Geek Speak Show to promote their projects. Isn't it time you used a show to promote your product? Send an email to ads at thegeekspeakshow.com. Now back to The Geek Speak Show. We are back on the Geek Speak Show. Hi, I'm Henry. Romo's not here. He is out in Sacramento corrupting the minds of America's youth. Tutoring is what he calls it, but that's what we call it. Producer Damon is here. Everybody else is here. Thanks a lot to Dino Andrade. SoulGeek.com on our link section. You can go on there if you find if you want to find your Soul Geek, a little play on uh, Soulmate there. So how about you, quote-unquote, regular girls? Have you ever wanted to date a geek? And if you did, do you want to understand him? 
There's actually a handbook out there, believe it or not. So let's talk to the author of I Love Geeks, the official handbook, Carrie Joe Tucker. Carrie, welcome to the Geek Speak Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, our, our pleasure. So the first thing that m- most regular girls would think is, okay, what, what qualifies Carrie to write a, a handbook for me about geeks? <laughs> um, funny, I get that question a lot. Well, <laughs> a few things. Uh, I'll tell you kind of how the idea came to be, and uh, I think that that will help understand a little bit better. Um, basically, I, throughout my entire life, have always been attracted to geeks or nerds. Um, I've always loved guys who are super intelligent, really passionate about something. Um, sometimes that may be a little bit out of you know what the average person would call mainstream. Um, and I had a lot of girlfriends who were kind of in the same boat, but their taste didn't quite perhaps, you know, match what we refer to as, you know, geeky taste, comics, games, science fiction. Um, and they started asking me, you know, you always date these guys and I want to to as well, but I don't, you know, how, what can I do to connect with them? Um, You know, I don't know anything about games, for example. Like, what games would I play that I would like? Something that I would be into, too. Something where I can, you know, connect with my guy a little bit more. And so I kind of found myself dispensing advice, like, oh, you know, this is kind of, you know, a good entryway, you know, entry-level game for you, and then, you know, here's something that you would like, you know, one step past that, and here's the more advanced version. And uh, basically, I thought about putting together a handbook for for people who might be in that same boat, just kind of consolidate all my knowledge and uh, put it out there and hopefully help other girls out. Yeah, Dino Andrade, the guest that's that was on. That's the wrong answer. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. Dino Andrade, like I said, the, the guest that was on right before you, he has a, a website called Soul Geek where he tries to match up you know, geek with a geek. Now, let me ask you, uh, since you have some, like you said, you have some girlfriends who who, who are regular girls, not not really would consider them geeky, but does that, does that do they really work out when, when, when they do match up with, with, with a geek or, or do those differences make them drift apart eventually? Well, I mean, you know, I think it's like I think it's like any relationship, you know. I mean, there has to be a common ground of some sort. And uh, you know, I think that sometimes opposites and oftentimes opposites can attract. Mm-hmm. I think as long as you kind of have a common ground and are interested in establishing that common ground, then your relationship's going to survive, you know? I mean, if you're going into a relationship and saying and I don't understand why my guy spends eight hours every night online gaming. I just don't get it. It's making me mad. I want him to spend time with me. You know, then you're not really going to have a great relationship. You know, I think it's all about compromise. I think it's about learning, you know, learning, uh, learning what the other person has to offer. I know I'm speaking in really general terms, so don't, you know, be afraid to ask me about specifics or anything. Yeah, and again, the book is called I Heart Geeks. I Love Geeks, the official handbook. She is Carrie Jo Tucker, the author. And Carrie, we don't want to give away too much. We do want to go out and get it. And if you guys do want to get it and you don't have it yet, go in our link section. There's a link on there. You can get the book for yourself or for a friend of yours. Uh, describe the types of geeks uh, as, you, as, as you describe them in the book. Uh, well, let's see. Um, there is, of course, the gaming geek, and you know that's the guy who's going to be spending most of his time on his PC or Xbox or you know, whatever console of choice he has. Um, super into, for example, we just started playing uh, Dead Island this weekend, so that's gonna, you know, that's gonna take up uh, most of his time to focus on his games, and then you have the comic geek who, you know, may be a super collector or, you know, maybe somebody who just likes to stay up to date on their books. And uh, I have a science fiction geek who, you know, is very, uh, very scientific and, you know, sometimes will cross over into the realm of fantasy as well. 
And uh, one, I have to say that one category that I didn't really explore in the book was uh, computer geeks. And I kind of had a little bit of an outcry about that. <laughs> People saying, wait a second, where are our original geeks, the computer geeks? And I think that that's almost become so, it's such a given now that so many people are so schooled in technology and so knowledgeable about, you know, computers and technology that I almost feel like it's not even a niche category anymore, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, you're right, because computers are just are everywhere in our lives, in our cars, you know, when we go to the bank, when we go to the grocery store, that, yeah, just about just about anybody almost has to be a computer geek just to go shopping, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And then I also got in a little bit to, uh, to sports geeks, which some people may think is kind of a misnomer, but not really. I mean, there are the fantasy leagues, which I'm not sure if – you or any of your listeners are into fantasy leagues or not, but I know some people who uh, write some fantastic software for it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, people who are up on their stats and, you know, really, really into it. Um, so those are, those are some of the general categories that I covered in my book. And one category I'd wanted to cover that I didn't quite get to were uh, music geeks, which is pretty pretty fun category too yeah our producer Damien actually he's our resident music geek here and I was going to say also those are pretty general terms because a lot of them they do cross into yep. each other right yep 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 it's like you know it's just like a big Venn diagram they all kind of overflow one into another you know yeah they were talking so the to- book is a real the book is a good it's a good way to you know it's like it's like a blueprint I mean you know you're you're geek that you're liking may be a little bit comic, um, a little bit gaming, um, you know, a lot sports, a little bit science fiction. So I like to think that I cover all the bases. <laughs> yeah, just Carrie Joe Tucker, like I said, she's the author of I Love Geeks, the official handbook. Uh, the cover is, is the little heart, I Heart Geeks. That's what it looks like. Uh, you can go to CarrieJoeTucker.com. It's all on our link section. Everything is on there for you, including the link for you guys to get the book if you haven't gotten it yet. Uh, Carrie, in your opinion, what you know, you know the old saying, "The way to a man's heart is through his stomach." For a geek, <laughs> what would you say is, is the way to a geek's heart? Oh gosh, well, I think that there's a few ways, and it depends on you know what your geek is loving. Obviously, I'm going to go back to the game reference again. I mean, I think that probably one of the most appealing things that you could do with your geek would be to sit down and say, "Hey, guess what?" I'm super into learning about this game that you're playing. Or if you don't even know how to operate a system, just say, can you show me how to operate the Xbox? I mean, you know, not to say that us women are are helpless little creatures that need to be shown how to do anything, because that's not the case. But, you know, it's just kind of, I think it's kind of a nice way of letting him know that you care about what he's doing and you care about his interests. And again, it's not to say that to be in a relationship, you have to care about what your guy cares about. It's just about finding common ground and it's about, you know, finding common interest. So I would say that for one, um, you know, maybe asking him a lot of questions about how he got into, say, you know, comics. Like, what comics did you read when you were a kid and what really inspired you into, what really inspired you, um, you know, wanting to continue this interest as an adult, you know, maybe go to the store with him, pick up a couple of books with him. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that those are, those are some of perhaps the, the way to a geek's heart. And then also, too, I would say, you know, in, intelligence as well. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not, don't think that you have to be Mensa level or anything like that. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, you know, I think that, that geeks really like to have an intelligent conversation. And I think that, you know, being open to knowledge and hungry for knowledge is is a really big quality, um, and I think that that's always important to be hungry for knowledge, and I think it's very attractive. Yeah, we, we've brought that up. We've had a few discussions on on, on just being a geek on, here on the show, and, and one thing that keeps popping up is to, to be a geek means to have an open mind about everything, not just comic books and all that, but just but about it, about life, really. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, I, I want to go back to the hungry for knowledge point that I just brought up, but yeah, it's you always want to learn and you're curious about the world 
and you're curious about the whys and the hows and like how did that happen? Why did that happen? Um, you know, I, I that was part of my interest as as a kid with science fiction is I always wanted to know why. You know, it's like it it's really you know that. God, what was it, the ridiculous uh, Insane Clown Posse song? Like, magnets, how do they work? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, when you're, when you're a kid, it's some people either really want to know how magnets work, they're kind of like, eh, whatever, they just work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and here, have you given any thought to writing a handbook for, for guys or helping somebody write a handbook for guys who want to date geek girls? Yeah, sure. I mean, that would be, it would be great to work on, uh, you know, volume 2.0. I would love to do something like that. I'm actually working on um, a novel right now, so it'd have to be some, some simultaneous writing, but I'm certainly not opposed to that at all. Do you yeah. think the demand is out there? Yeah, I think so, because, you know, we, we've, we've, we see it here on the show when we cover conventions and just talking to our listeners here, you know, the geek girls have really come up, and I would say in the past five, six years, and they are making their presence known. So you know, it just like mm -hmm. there's a lot of regular girls who want to want to de date geeks. There are a lot of regular guys who are now saying, "Hey, let me give this geek girl a chance." So yeah, yeah, I think the demand is out there. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I really that that makes me really happy. <laughs> Yeah, so, so again, she's Carrie Jo Tucker, the author of I Love Geeks, the official handbook. CarrieJoTucker.com is her blog. It's all linked up on GeekSpeakRadioShow.com in our link section. Where else would it be? Uh, Carrie, before we let you go, what, what do you geek out over? Oh, gosh. Um, I would have to say that one of my A number one uh, geek outs is literature and horror. I am such a a gigantic, gigantic horror nerd that it is just, you know, it gets to the point where even, you know, my boyfriend, who's a pretty big uh, geek himself, is kind of like, okay, can we just chill on uh, <laughs> on these horror movies for a little while? Um, and then, of course, books and reading as well. And, you know, I've always been super into uh, fantasy. And I think probably as a, as a kid, you know, Madeline Langle was like, my be all end all and I would always be sitting at the dinner table with a book, you know, tucked under my plate. And fortunately my parents were, you know, really supportive and never told me to stop reading and never told me to stop writing and, you know, although they would sometimes tell me to stop watching, you know, Friday the thirteenth when I was like eleven. <laughs> but uh but yeah, those are those are my two those are my two biggies. And then of course, you know, I'll play games with my boyfriend and you know, I read my comics as well. When I was a kid, uh, ElfQuest was number one for me. And, uh, you know, we would do our whole, we, of course, would do some role-playing. And I have to embarrassingly admit that I would always want to choose Felita. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my, my guilty pleasure. <laughs> Okay, so so that that is Carrie Jo Tugger again. She's the author of I Love Geeks, the official handbook. The uh, cover just says I Heart Geeks. E pretty easy to find. CarrieJoTucker dot com is her blog. It's all linked up on our on our link section on GeekSpeakRadioShow dot com. Carrie, thanks a lot for coming on. And everybody, go go get the book if you haven't gotten it, or get it for a friend. So, Carrie, thanks again for coming on the show. Oh, thank you, Henry. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and you're welcome back anytime. Oh, thank you. I would love to come back. Okay, talk to you later. All right. Bye. The Geek Speak Show will be back in a moment. Tell the world about that great book you just finished reading or read when you were younger. Send an email to books at thegeekspeakshow.com and your book will be featured on the weekly book club segment. Just a few rules. One, the book must be in the sci-fi, horror, or fantasy genre. Or a mashup of those. Two, biographies are okay as long as it's relevant to geek culture. <gasps> You know, George Lucas, Stan Lee, Steve Jobs, etc., etc. Three, no comic books, but graphic novels are okay. Four, you must have read the book and loved it. Don't suggest the book just because my friend's cousin, sister's boyfriend's dad said it was good. And that's it. Send your suggestions to books at thegeekspeakshow.com and you might hear your book mentioned on next week's show. If possible, we might even have the writer on to talk about the book. Books at thegeekspeakshow.com to have your book featured on the Geek Speak Show Book Club. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our next attraction, Comics Commentary with David Lee on the Geek Speak.
Geek Show. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Geek Speak Show. As you know, we're about to do comics commentary with me. I don't need to tell you who I am. As you all know, Valentine's Day is coming up rather fast and love is in the air all around the world. I haven't figured out if it's love or it's a mass-induced psychosis that makes that makes lovers go out and try to find the best place to eat on Valentine's Day. You're just in for some heartache. Sorry, dude. Hate to tell you. But as in love, with love being around in real life, love also triumphs all in comic books. This week, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of those famous power couples such as Lois Lane and Clark Kent, Gwen St- Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker when they were together, Mary Jane Watson and Peter Parker, Jean Grey and Scott Summers, and a little-known couple known as Ralph and Sue Dibney from the DC Comics universe. Love is always a powerful thing in the comics. Whether you want to see it, it's usually always there. So the first power couple we're going to talk about is good old Lois Lane and Clark Kent. These two have been star-crossed lovers chasing each other around the mulberry bush since the 30s. In the original Adventures of Superman TV show, they had Phyllis Coates and George Reeves and also Kirk Allen before him playing this, the two lovers. And then Noel Neal stepped up with George Reeves and they continued it. Always Lois Lane was known as the smart, tough chick who could hold her own but also was madly in love with Superman. Eventually, Super, eventually, Clark Kent revealed himself as the Man of Steel to Lois Lane, and finally the whole love triangle between Lois and Clark was over. And as if you don't know your comics, well, here's a little bit of bitty bit of a backstory. Lois loves Superman. Clark secretly loves Lois. Lois knows this but doesn't want to acknowledge it because he's too much of a geek. Then they finally reveal each they. Clark and Clark slash Superman reveals himself and all is well. The wedding, the wedding issue of Superman where the two got married had at least two or three printings worldwide. And it's only because of the new 52 that they actually decided to separate the two, which I think is absolute bollocks. These two need to be together constantly. I mean, it's just who they are. Moving on to another power couple, Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. These two have been going at it, I want to say, since the 70s, maybe 80s. When they first showed Mary Jane Watson in the comics, she was oh, her face was always hidden by something. You never knew what it was. It could have been a magazine, could have been a bush, could have been a lamp. But with those, with those fateful words, face it, Tiger, you hit the jackpot. Mary Jane and Peter were together for life. Of course, you had Gwen Stacy going on in the comics, too, which... Gwen Stacy was another love of Peter Parker. You'll see her in this, in this summer's upcoming Amazing Spider-Man movie. She was one of the catalysts for Peter to actually go mad-ass on Green Goblin. Her death shook, shook Peter Parker's life to the core. And it was a love between the two of them that if it wouldn't have been for Mary Jane, I think Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker would have been together. With Mary Jane... Mary Jane Watson, she was a part-time supermodel whenever she could. She did her own thing, and she secretly knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, as they showed in one of the untold tales of Spider-Man. But these two were like magnets. They were growing increasingly, increasingly closer until they finally got married and tied, and tied everything up. Like the, like the Superman wedding issue, that... That particular issue drew at least two or three printings as well, and it was loved everywhere. There was even a live-action remake of that way. Not, not really a remake, but there was a live-action portrayal of that wedding at, in New York, at the New York City Stadium for baseball. I can't remember the one off the top of my head. Not a baseball fan. Sue me. Now, next power couple up I'd like to go ahead and talk about, Jean Grey and Scott Summers. Wow, these two have been kicking around since 1960 in issue one. You, first, you had Jean Grey, telepathic, telepathic extraordinaire with a little telekinesis thrown in there for good measure. Then you had everybody's favorite geek with optic blast Cyclops, Scott Summers. Now, if you've been listening to my podcast as, as a regular listener, you know I loves me some Cyclops. My favorite character. 
So when it when it eventually came down to these two getting together, I was cheering like the fanboy that I am. But however, fate, destiny, or the attitude of the writers would put it, Jean Grey and Scott were separated by the Phoenix for the longest time. Now the now you could argue that that Scott did cheat on Jean, as it were, with Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. But in my opinion, the only reason he did it was because she looked exactly like Jean. And that's either a strange case of brain no worky or something, but still, it kind of did show his dedication to Jean Grey. When she came back, the two of them continued on with their relationship, even withstanding a certain stocky five foot four pissed off Wolverine all the time trying to sniff up her crotch, which was equally amusing in its own right via comics or comics or television. They ended up getting married again, and I actually remember reading the wedding issue and falling in love with it. I loved these two as a power couple. And now I'd like to talk to talk about one final power couple that it's kind of the best kept secret of comics, really. It's a lo- it's a little known couple named Ralph and Sue Dibney. A little backstory, because I don't really know much about them, but I know what impact they had. Ralph Dibney is also known as the Elongated Man in D- in the DCU. Ralph and Sue's love was so pure and so innocent that pretty much everybody in the DC universe, all the main characters, looked towards their relationship and their marriage. As the go-to. This is how it's supposed to be done. Even though they had their differences, their ins and outs, they were always in love more than anything. And then one day, Ray Palmer's ex-wife, Laura, decided to go ahead and jack things all up. In a very sick and twisted way of getting the Adams' attention, Nora, Nora, Laura, either way, she took one of Ray Palmer's Adam belts to make him small, shrunk herself down, stepped on uh, Sue Dibney's brain, and killed her. This sparked the six-issue comic Identity Crisis, which is still one of the most haunting and most shocking reads I've ever read out of the DC Universe. If you ever want to learn the the true meaning of star-crossed lovers, go to your local comic shop, pick up the trade paperback for Identity Crisis. You will... You will not, I guarantee you that you will be moved and you will not put it down for the entire six issues. Now, I could go on about some other star crossed lovers like Hawkman and Hawk Girl, which, you know, those two are a huge power couple. Actually, I'd like to go ahead and talk about them briefly, come to think of it. Shaira, Hall, Shaira and Carter Hall were, act, were originally lovers in the Egyptian period. They turn, it turned out, though, their fates were always destined to be destined to be intertwined after some nasty little black magic from the man, I believe, from the man who would become Black Adam. Don't quote me on that, though. The two were, the two were always in love, but then they found out that their, that their little curse was that whenever they died, they would be reincarnated, but they would be apart. And the moment they actually found each other again, bad stuff was bound to happen. If you ever want to take a look at Tragic Lovers... Look, look no further than those two. Either way you look at it, Lois and Clark, Gene and Scott, Ralph and Sue, Peter and Mary Jane, start love. the idea of love is always in our comics, no matter how we look at it. If you want to look at the little, in, not, quite, not quite indie, as in talking about Spawn, you had Al Simmons and Wanda. That's another case of star-crossed lovers. No matter how you slice it, love is always in the air in the comics. And it even gets translated over to the, a different medium when you think about it. You have the X-Men TV series. You've had the Spider-Man TV series. And more notably than all of them, you had Lois and Clark, the new, the new Adventures of Superman. Which basically took Superman to turn it into a soap opera. But still, the whole idea was there. So, like I said, love is in the air no matter what. Instead of, instead of turning it away and saying, oh, I don't have a loved one this year, blah, 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 get your head out of your ass. Go down to your local comic shop. Pick up some of these titles I've mentioned, Identity Crisis, the Hawkman series. Go on Netflix. Look up Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Look up some of the, some of the cartoons of X-Men and Spider-Man. 
you can't stop it. Love's in the air, and you might like it because you never know. It might make you more attractive to the other race or the other sex, I should say. Till next time, this is Dave with Comics Commentary. I'm always looking for your feedback. Check on Facebook. I'm always there. Later. Hold on. The Geek Speak Show will be right back. Tell the world about that great book you just finished reading or read when you were younger. Send an email to books at thegeekspeakshow.com and your book will be featured on the weekly book club segment. Just a few rules. One, the book must be in the sci-fi, horror, or fantasy genre. Or a mashup of those. Two, biographies are okay as long as it's relevant to geek culture. (gasps) You know, George Lucas, Stan Lee, Steve Jobs, etc., etc. Three, no comic books, but graphic novels are okay. Four, you must have read the book and loved it. Don't suggest a book just because my friend's cousin, sister's boyfriend's dad said it was good. And that's it. Send your suggestions to books at thegeekspeakshow.com and you might hear your book mentioned on next week's show. If possible, we might even have the writer on to talk about the book. Books at thegeekspeakshow.com to have your book featured on the Geek Speak Show Book Club. And now here's the Geek Speak Show Book Club. Here's Henry and Romo. Ah, yes, love is in the air. It's everywhere, isn't it? Happy Geeky Valentine's Day to all of you on the Geek Speak Show, doing a special Valentine's Day edition of it. So, time for the book club. And no, it's not a Valentine's Day book. Uh, would have made sense, though. I mean, if I had picked one, would have made sense, wouldn't it? But no, it's actually something that I like, and I know I can tell by all the downloads and all the stuff, all the emails you guys send me. It's something that we all love here, and that's horror, scary stuff. The book that I picked this week is called Shock Value. How a few eccentric outsiders gave us nightmares, conquered Hollywood, and invented modern horror. It's by Jason Cinnamon, published by Penguin Press. This book is uh, very similar to the book we featured back in Halloween, uh, Leslie Bannatyne's book, Halloween Nation. It's not a be- it's not a behind the scenes look at the making of the movies. It's a behind the scenes look at the culture, so our culture, society's culture, and and it's the culture in Hollywood at the time. What led to the creation of movies like Carrie, Rosemary's Baby, Halloween, T- Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it talks about. A lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the like it says, the, the creators of modern horror, Wes Craven, Brian De Palma's in this, Roman Polanski, John Carpenter talks about how John Carpenter was sitting in on uh, in class in film school, and he got a lecture from Roman Polanski, and that really inspired him to become the John Carpenter that we all know and love. It's a really good book. It's very interesting again to to, to be able to to be there and see. What actually the work that actually went into not just during the filming, but actually even getting the studios to say, yeah, okay, let's do this kind of movie. Because a lot of them did. Obviously, there hadn't been nobody had ever seen someone like the tech, something like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Halloween before or Rosemary's Baby, and they were like, I don't know about this movie here. But you know, it obviously it finally happened. There, those films are now legends, horror icons. So it's a good behind the scenes look, not at the making of the movie, like I said, but. What went into what was what were, what were the directors the studios what were they thinking when these stories came to them when Rosemary's Baby and Carrie and Halloween and Toby Hooper's uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre came around and again it features uh, Wes Craven Brian De Palma Roman Polanski John Carpenter some other even Steven Spielberg is mentioned in here it's called Shock Value how a few eccentric outsiders gave us nightmares conquered Hollywood. And invented the modern horror by Jason Zinneman, published by Penguin Press. Link is up on the book section, like always on the on the uh, on GeekSpeakRadioShow dot com. Just uh, click on the book section there, the book club, and you'll go there. So again, again, looking for your suggestions. Just talked to Carrie Joe Tucker a few minutes ago, author of I Love Geeks: The Official Handbook. We were talking off the air after we finished the interview. She has she she loves reading, obviously, duh, but she loves reading. You know, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, and she said she's gonna send me a list of some of her favorites. So we're gonna get some from her. You all, like I said, can suggest your books. Send it to books at thegeekspeakshow dot com. Books at thegeekspeakshow dot com. Just remember, it's got to be a sci-fi, horror, fantasy, a mashup of those. Could be biographies as long as it's somebody that we like. Like for example, Wes Craven, Brian De Palma, Stan Lee, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Steve Jobs. 
any anybody like that. It, um, send it again, books at thegeekspeakshow.com, and we'll feature your books because I don't want it to be just Romo and Henry's books all the time. I'd, I, it, I've always said, this is your show, so share with us. What are some of the books that you love and you want us to know about it? So again, it's books at thegeekspeakshow.com. Now, I came up with something last week, last weekend, actually, I should say, a way to keep Romo on the show, even though he's not physically here with us. What is it? Well, take a listen and see what you guys think. This is how we're going to keep Romo on the show without him physically being here. Take it away, Romo. The Romo Report on the Geek Speak Show. Powered by Collider.com, Ramoscreen.com, GeekTyrant.com, and Romo's Geek Cred. Here's Romo. Hey guys, it's Romo. I've been geeking out a lot. You know, over the Super Bowl trailers, you know, there were just so many, so many good trailers. The Avengers, John Carter, G.I. Joe Retaliation. Now, the Avengers, I'm really happy because we got Loki and the Scrolls, and we know that the villains were introduced, and I'm excited. And we got the first glimpse of Hulk. So I'm really happy with that because he's one of my favorite characters out of the whole Avengers. So it's good that the whole game is back. As far as John Carter goes, um, <laughs> let's just say, uh, what could I, I mean, that's nothing really to say. But episode one in 3D, we did get a first glimpse as far as when it was going to be in theaters. And it already went in. It made $23 million in the box office this weekend. But, I mean, I don't know, I'm not part of the 23 million people that went to go see it, but for me, 3D is a gimmick, and, I mean, it's, it is Star Wars, but who really wants to see Jaja Binks in 3D? I mean, I know I don't. Lately, there's been an overkill as far as <laughs> Star Wars in commercials. Now, we had a glimpse of Volkswagen, you know, the Fat Dog commercial. We had the MetLife Geeky commercial. We had, we had uh, R2-D2 in Verizon. We had the whole Volkswagen barking dog singing you know, I mean, it, there's something about that that I feel that, you know, mainstream has kind of gotten a little, let's just say, an overkill about Star Wars. I mean, I know it's there, but guys, but come on, can we just move on with another movie? Now, moving on to another movie, the Amazing Spider-Man trailer just premiered. I don't know, I haven't seen it yet, but let's just leave it at this. Henry doesn't like it, and David Lee likes it. I just can't wait to see what happens over the summer when it does come out. Now, another thing I'm geeking out about is... The River. It just premiered on ABC. I saw both episodes. I loved it. I overheard Henry and Damien saying that they really liked it. Now, for me, I felt that it was the black magic of the week. It was really nice to see Bruce Greenwood as Dr. Emmett Cole. It was it was cool to see the whole family trying to find him. You know, if it's, it's kind of a cool adventure. They're hanging out in the Amazon. It's suspenseful. It's a mystery hunt. I mean, for me, hey, I like black magic. Not in that way, but as far as... It's kind of it's kind of a good take. It's really suspenseful. It feels like it feels like you know when you're sitting at home and you want to watch something scary, you can watch The River. Now speaking of scary, The Walking Dead season two, episode eight just came back from the mid-season break. Last year we were talking about Team Rick, Team Shane. Now for me, I am Team Herschel. Just watched it. Really good. I mean, I was kind of at first wondering what they were gonna do. As far as Carol's reaction with Sophie being dead and knowing that she was a zombie the whole time, but the way Herschel just told him to leave and, and the way that everything planned out, I mean, it's kind of for me trying to see how Rick is a badass now. I liked it. I'm Team Rick. Fringe is back. I'm really excited. I love the fact that Olivia, Peter, and Walter are all normal and interacting and having a fun time. Love it, love it, love it. But one thing that I'm really curious to know is what's up with the observers and massive dynamic. I think there's a, a real underlying plot going on right there. I'm trying to see what's happening. Maybe, maybe massive dynamic and the observers are working together. So that's what I've been geeking out about. Now, if you guys liked what I was talking about, please send me a message at Romo at the com. Other than that, keep on geeking out, guys. And I'll see you next week. The Romo Report. Powered by Collider.com, Ramoscreen.com, GeekTyrant.com, and Romo's Geek Cred. We're back on the Geek Speak Show. Here's Henry and Romo. 
You, young man, are not Roma. No, I'm not. Not at all. Roma looks better. Welcome back to the Geek Speak <laughs> show. Producer Damon sitting in here with me. So that is finishing up the show. What are you going to do for Valentine's Day? Well, oh, you told us. Mommy. No. Nah. Taking her to the woman in black. Oh, there you go. Because she thinks it's Harry Potter. <laughs> Tell her it's not. Uh, it's so scarier. <laughs> so uh, let's do what we always do with da- producer Damien, our TV talk uh, section. Your show is back. You know, I always, Romo and I always get yeah. excited about our show, Fringe. Your show is back. Yes. Walking, Walking Dead. dead. Or, wait, wait. No, we got to say it right. AMC is The Walking Dead. There. There you go. That's the way you got to say it. Speaking of Romo, before we talk to TV, speaking of Romo, I wish he was here so we can give this to him live on Mem- on uh, Memorex at least. But Mattel just released sent us a press release that says, "Back to the Future hoverboard." Finally, the, this totally awesome one to one replica of the hoverboard from Back to the Future two and three. I'm not going to read the whole press release, but basically it means hoverboards are the real thing. They they're coming out. Roman wow. can get his own hoverboard. He can get his own hoverboard. But they don't work. It's just a toy. Uh, what? It's from Mattel. It's just a toy. Oh. You think they were going to give you the whole thing? I mean, progress. I mean, 2015, saying, they're saying maybe they can, it can work by then. I'm saying, man. But I mean, Romo's like, favorite movie, Back to the Future, so now he can get his own hoverboard. Last year, or earlier this year, Nike released the, uh, what do you call those things? The, the, the shoes that tie themselves for that Marty McFly hat from Back to the Future 2. So there you go. Now you can use the, those to ride on those hoverboards when they work. So Romo... See, there you go. Something for you to geek out on his Roma report next week. So, like I said, Walking Dead is back. That's your show. I'm going to start with you. What do you think? I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Well, uh, gee, I'm shocked. Well, I mean, Walking Dead uh, never seems to disappoint me, man. I mean, you know, just seeing the, you know, seeing um, Rick, you know, getting back to doing his thing. and Go ahead, I, Henry. I, I, I talk about this with Romo all the time. Mm-hmm. I've never, I don't know why. I've never asked you. This is your show. Are you Team Rick or Team Shane? Team Rick. It's like we're talking Twilight here, but no, no team. <laughs> no team Rick, definitely. I mean, for the simple fact is Rick, you know. Uh, I mean, he really. I mean, for the fact that you know he found his family and he went through this, he went through that, and you know, I mean, his family at one point thought he was dead, and you know, he was killing off those. Well, what about uh, this past episode? Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! The very end, when he just shoots those guys. Oh yeah. Did you like that? Loved it. Really made you Team Rick now? <laughs> yeah, Team Rick. All I thought when I saw that it is shame better look out. Don't piss him off yeah, or that's like, what's gonna happen to you. Like really. So your show is back, you like it. I I, I liked it too. Um can't wait to see what happens. I understand not gonna play the spoiler alert again, but I understand that it's gonna get even more intense as the season goes on as we get draw close to the end. And there's a little surprise or two coming. Um We'll probably get it from Robert Kirkman. We're going to talk to him at the Image Comic Expo coming up in in, uh, in Oakland at the end of this month. He'll be there. Of course, we want to talk about that. I want to talk to him more about Skybound, but how can we not talk about Walking The Walking Dead. Dead when he's right in front of you? Of course. So we'll maybe get some of that. The River, haven't seen a second episode yet because as you guys listen to this, it's Tuesday. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Now you guys know how to get your soul geek and you regular girls have a handbook on how to like us geeks. So happy Valentine's Day to you. Um, the River, we haven't seen the second one. Romo, we heard it on his Romo report. He he he. Surprisingly, he liked it. He, you know how he is with the scary stuff. Yeah, giggles all through it. Um, That's why I never sit next to him whenever we go to the movies. Yeah, I noticed you guys always have him sit next to me. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Alcatraz, you know, it, it's still like I said last week. It still hasn't changed. It's still convict of the week. So unless they change something. It's Undercovers too. This one's gonna, probably going to go the yeah, same way as Undercovers. So. Cancelled. I, I agree. What else? Oh, Fringe, of course. Grim, the, like both of them. Mm-hmm. Once Upon a Time. We're going to have somebody from Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time next week. That made no sense. But next week, we're going to have somebody from uh, one of the actors from Once Upon a Time. It'll be, you guys know him as Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, him. He'll be on with us, and uh, we'll ask him a few things about one. Not, not, not going to give anything away. So we'll just. We just talked to him about being on the show. We're also, um, I, I teased this last week. Didn't happen this week, obviously, but it's coming soon. Somebody from Grimm. Now that Romo's not actually here, he won't have his geek hissy fit and we'll walk walk off the show because we have somebody from Grimm. So we're going to have somebody from Grimm and 
he will reveal a lot of things about a, a, one of the major characters on Grimm. Nobody's dying, and even if they were, we wouldn't tell you anyway. But we will have them on, and they'll tell you all about their character. So what else are we missing? Is that it? Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. No Terra Nova. No. Uh, I did see a teaser. What was that? Well, I was watching something, but then I did see a teaser for, not Terra Nova, the other one, Falling Sky is coming soon. So be on the lookout for that yes. when that comes back. But definitely Walking Dead. Damon's excited. He's been yes. dancing he the Thriller dance all when he, since he came into the studio. He's happy the zombies are back, the walkers as they call yes. them. So there you go, TV talk. Um, let's finish off the show. And I actually, I'm going to take a little break before we finish off the show. You actually did bring a little surprise. Yeah, I did. Has something to do with the Geek Girl search, huh? Ooh, yes. You guys will find out yes, what sir. that is when we come back. The Geek Speak Show will be back in a moment. Now you have another way to promote your geek product besides conventions. The Geek Speak Show. The Geek Speak Show has a loyal following that is just waiting for a new app for their smartphone, the most awesomest t-shirt to show off their geek pride, or insert your product here. Advertise on the show or on the Geek Speak website or on both. And you're guaranteed to reach the same audience you'd reach at your favorite con. Interested? Send an email to ads at thegeekspeakshow.com for more information and ad rates. Movie and TV studios, comic book artists and publishers and actors know to come on The Geek Speak Show to promote their projects. Isn't it time you used the show to promote your product? Send an email to ads at thegeekspeakshow.com. We're back on The Geek Speak Show. Please make a note of it. Producer Damien. Hi. How you, you doing? Did you make a note of it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Welcome back to the Geek Speak Show. I'm Henry. He's Producer Damien. Closing out the show, I take it you really like The Walking Dead? Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we couldn't tell during that uh, TV talk segment. <laughs> so uh, next week we'll do a lot of more of that stuff. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit Star Trek again. We did Star Trek Star Wars last week. Did right. The state of the franchises and all that. We were going to have a guest on who we've had on before, Scott Tipton. He, came, he, he writes and his brother draws the Star Trek comics for IDW Comics. Right, right, right. He was going to come on to talk to us about the state of the franchise, but he said, you know what? I'm going to hold on because he's got some breaking news. Breaking news, everybody. He's got breaking news about the Star Trek comics. He'll tell us what that is next week. Next week. Yeah, so be here for that. Also, you guys ever heard of a show called Once Upon a Time on ABC every yeah, Sunday? Yeah, I've heard of that. The one that Romo said, no, I don't want to watch. And I said, give it a chance. I, I, I thought the same thing. I watched it and I'm hooked. So we're going to have, I won't say his name, but you guys know him as Jiminy Cricket on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, him. He'll be on with us next week also. And, of course, some other surprises. And drum roll, please. Don't do it. Drum roll, please. But we don't have a budget. We got to. Okay, go ahead. We don't have James Cameron's budget here. Uh you guys know I'm still looking for a Geek Girl co-host. All right, that's enough over there. <laughs> Geek Girl co-host to join us. And I've gotten a few emails from them. And, I, and, I, and, and the first couple ones were not exactly what we were looking for. We don't really want you to come on here. And you're not, you're not going to be an American Idol judge or anything like that. It's not the kind of show that we do here. We actually have talent on this show. But what we do want is somebody who you don't have to know this stuff backwards and forwards. That's what you have, the walking encyclopedia known as me for Romo knows that already you know that producer Damien so if you want to be on with us and talk to like we just finished talking to Dino Andrade talking to Carrie Joe Tucker about their their Valentine's Day gifts for you guys and they're up on our link section if you want to go and check all that out thanks again to both of them for coming on but if you want to talk to those people or just talk geek out in general geek girl at the geek speak show.com geek girl at the geek speak show.com Send me either a link to your YouTube channel or an MP3 saying, hey, I'm so-and-so and and this is why I should be your geek girl. Told you guys last week, couple of weeks, we actually got some good ones and you may hear them every now and then. Everybody ready? Here's the first one. Let's introduce you. Here, step up to the microphone. No, that's not the microphone. That one, that's the microphone. That's, That's a fan. That's the microphone right there. So say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Violet. She's Violet. That's her name. She's not actually the, the color violet, but that, that's her name. Uh, so tell us tell us a little bit about you. Don't tell us your address or anything like that, but just tell us just a little bit about you. Introduce yourself to everybody that's listening out there. 
Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Violet. I am a student at the College of San Mateo, and I'm a geek just And like that means guys. just don't stalk her. Don't go to the College of San Mateo and say, hey, I want to meet Violet. I listen to the Geek, geek Speak show all the time. I want to meet her. Don't do that, because she will hurt you. No, I probably will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what kind of stuff do you, do you geek out about? Or, or everybody's probably wondering, why should she she'd be a Geek Girl co-host? What do I geek out about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a major music geek, but not just American music, also Asian music as well. So um, now we know why producer Damien liked you. He's our resident music geek here too. You two are going to be pretty good partners over there. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, she's not. She's um not what you guys would consider a geek. She doesn't know you know the YT100 and what that really means. She's just looking at me like, what are you talking about? Yeah, she's shaking her head right now. I yeah, have no she, idea. She doesn't know that stuff, but that's fine. I do. Romo kind of does. Producer Damien, as you all remember, he was the same way when he first came on. Now he's starting to learn this stuff. So she is more into the performance part. She is more into, um, I'm going to just give you the girl's voice, the girl's perspective on all the stuff that we talk about. Because especially with the, we should have had her on. We should have had you on. We should have had you come earlier so you can ju- you could have jumped on on this uh, Valentine's Day stuff. Because, um, hey, why don't we do that? Closing out the show. You are a girl. Last time we checked. Yes. <laughs> Any guy listening out there wondering, hey, how do I find my perfect girl? You're a girl. Tell them. How would they find Yeah, the let them know. Girl? What's well, the secret? You got to take initiative. Because I hate to say it, most of us girls, we, we, I guess we're waiting for someone else to take initiative. <laughs> I don't know. Say hi to your fellow classmate or something if you're interested. I mean, you don't have to like jump on them. Be like, hi. Hey, hey, it's family show here. <laughs> but you know take initiative say hi you know start up a friendship yeah ask them certain questions I don't know ask them well what are you watching on TV do you like The Walking Dead maybe she doesn't who knows <laughs> so I mean kind of like we got from from the guests just acknowledge the fact number one that they're there totally would be one. Second is actually conversate yeah don't just stare at them because that's, that's kind of weird yeah kind of like a Roma moment like what and you just say, "Hey, hi, I'm I'm so and so." That would be that would help introduce yourself. Don't be a stranger. Hi, I'm so and so. You know, I noticed you're reading this book or whatever. Um, I like it too. What do you What do you think of this? Because a lot of nowadays, a lot of books they come in trilogies. They, they there's three or four parts. Um, just say that I like this part or I like this part better. And before you know it, you probably made a new friend. Doesn't have to be turned into a girlfriend, per se, but you probably made a new friend. Someone else you can geek with. Yeah, there you go. So. That's Violet. That's her name. Again, she's not actually the color Violet. Um, so she will be on with us next week. And like I said, Scott Tipton will be on with, with us. Jiminy Cricket. Well, the actor, not the actual Jiminy Cricket. He'll be on with us from Once Upon a Time also next week. And also David Lee and everybody else. All the usuals be on. Maybe not Romo, but uh, we, we did find a way to get him on. So he'll be on there also. So everybody say bye. Bye-bye. See ya. And we'll see you next week. That's it for this week. Come back next week for an all-new episode of the Geek Speak Show. In the meantime, follow them on Twitter, find them on Facebook, subscribe and iTunes, and listen to past shows and special features on the Geek Speak Show YouTube page. YouTube.com slash Geek Speak Videos. We'll see you next week. Tell your friends about the Geek Speak Show. Yeah.